everybody, it's Tyler here at the Indiana Robotics Invitation. Checking team number 5406, Celtex coming in out of Canada. I'm here, by the way, with Rubab and Kayla, and talking about this phenomenal robot semifinalist at championships this year, and it's had phenomenal past performances out of Canada as well. Uh, of course, we'll be talking about that cargo journey, going up through their robot. Uh, really cool uh, turret mechanism they have here. I want you to focus in on that, and a great climber as well, too. Let's talk about more about it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. So let's start with your intake, Rubab. Uh, talk to me about uh, just some of the design, any iterations you went through, and then we'll pass it over to Kayla to talk about any programming sensors, that sort of thing. Sure. So for our intake, there were multiple design reiterations that we had to do. The intake that we have, as you can see, it's pretty flimsy, and that's on purpose because we would uh, hit the side a lot, and then so then it's easy when cargo goes in, goes right in. Even if a robot like hits us or anything, or if we hit a wall, then it's not a problem. It doesn't really break. I think we only had one break throughout the whole season, and. Other than that, also over here, right here, as the cargo goes in, we have, we originally had two of these, which we call jazz hands, and that kind of helps guide the cargo into the feeder. But then uh, in off season, we kind of just switched it over to this uh, 3D printed wheel sort of thing. And that kind of helps guide the cargo better. And it um, allows for us to pick up two at once and then guides both of them individually in. What kind of stress testing have you done with like this type of design to, to make sure that like it's going to be compliant enough and not break and that sort of thing? Uh, so for that, originally we had it printed as an actual wheel, but then that didn't necessarily work as well as we would have liked it. So then that's why we kind of just cut off the bits in between. Yeah and have this cool design now. It, it looks really yeah. awesome, I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. Uh, any sensors that go into your, uh, your intake area before we get into your feeder? So originally we were going to have, we we're going to have two color sensors, but we ended up taking them out because of weight, obviously. We've had some weight issues, and also because we didn't have enough time. But what, what it would have done is it would have automated the process so we could have known what color ball we have. Yeah. So we would have been able to intake, let's say, only red or only blue. So uh, from your feeder, as we go from the uh, intake uh, into your feeder, Rubab, uh, anything from a mechanical design area that you want to highlight for that? Like, how did you figure out, like, the angle you wanted to go with uh, from, like, compression and that sort of thing? So for that, we actually did a lot of testing. Uh, what, we, what, what we found helped a lot was definitely the mumpers, and we raised um, the height of these standoffs of the battery cover, so it was just about level to the bumpers. And that way, there was enough compression once the cargo goes in right here. And then it kind of has like the contact point of over here. We had to adjust the angle of these wheels quite a bit to find the perfect place. But then once we did, it would go in very smoothly. And let's, uh, I know we're going to get the robot up and powered here, but I'd love to see a cargo piece come in just so we can see how that flow works on there as well, too. So deploy off that uh, intake and uh, take a look. And then we're going to go, uh, of course, into your uh, turret as well, too, which looks just awesome. So so as it kind of goes into that next step here, this turret, uh, massive, beefy turret. I love the look of it, going with kind of the Dalrin design. Uh, talk to me about, like, the material choice here and then uh, anything from your shooter uh, turret area as well, too. Sure. So there were – we originally prototype in wood most of the time just because it's, you know, cheap, easy to use, and we can usually get it um, – multiple reiterations done in a single meeting because of uh, the shop facilities that we sure. have. We ended up with uh, the Dalaran. The 3D prints we typically like to use just because we have a couple 3D printers in yeah. our shop. So then, you know, it's pretty easy to print them out. Uh, the Dalaran we use uh, pretty much because of how strong it is for what we need it to be. It was nice. Um, like we in our shop, we, can, we had like specific machines that we were able to use to cut the designs out. 
was the idea all along to go with this type of hood to have the multiple positions or what was some of the thought process on that? So that's a Kayla thing because sure. that was definitely a programming part where we had to find the correct angles for that and then it's an adjustable hood. So then Kayla. If you yeah, Kayla, talk to me about more of the what's gone into the adjustable hood from a programming aspect and figure out everything for that. So we have the limelight. So the, basically the way the limelight works is um, it tracks it tr tracks the hub and we translate that into angles so we can basically figure out what angle we need the cargo to go in order for it to actually go in. And it's not as simple as that though because it can go in but it can just bounce straight out. So you need to get like a specific angle so it hits like kind of up high so it bounces actually into the actual hub itself. Let's start to wrap up on your robot. Let's go into your uh, climber here. Uh, talk to me about uh, any mechanical features of it. I know we're, we're going to show up your climber sequence a little bit as well, too, yeah. so I'll have one of you two kind of narrate that process as well. Uh, but let's just start out what's gone into your climber and uh, what made you choose this type of design as well. So um, at the beginning of the season, there were a couple different uh, designs that we were going through, but then this design we came up with, uh, windmill climb. Uh, essentially, it hang latches onto the bars. Uh, we start at the mid-rung. And it latches onto the bars over, show over here. These both go down on either side. And then it's pressured air, it's air pressured right now, but it, it goes down, like the air cylinder, it goes down. And then these kind of hooks open up backwards. So unhooks like that. And then latches on to the mid rung. And then it, you want to deploy the sequence. It's a sec seven second sequence wow. from one button. If you want to, yeah, climb. So then latches on like that. Pretty much it. Yeah. I'd uh, love to hear from a programming standpoint of doing that automated sequence on there. Like, what, what testing did you have to do? What went all into uh, making that so successful? Because it's worked out so well for uh, 5406 this year as well. So it was just a lot of. Um, we had to go through a lot of iterations to make sure it actually worked. I believe we actually originally did it where it was timed, but. Sometimes it doesn't reach the time in time, obviously. So we switched to ang making it based on the angle, so it doesn't fall. But um, while we're pra while we're actually testing, I don't believe we actually made it the robot fall at all, because we al we also use pillows underneath our climber just in case. But basically, it was just a lot of us going through the code, trying to break it down ourselves before we actually tested it on the robot to see what it would need to do in order for it to actually work. Well, 5406 Celtex, really appreciate you taking time. Tell us more about your team and your robot this year. Uh, like I said, I always look forward to seeing uh, what Celtex brings to the table. Phenomenal robot coming out of Canada. Good luck, of course, here at IRI. I know you got quite a few yeah. off-season events you're attending, so can't wait to see performance results of that. But, and also can't wait to see your robot next year. So thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their Wii Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.